As more states consider the legalization of cannabis for both medicinal and recreational use, opponents are warning that such moves actually open the door to criminal groups in a burgeoning black market. As correspondent John Ferrugia of Rocky Mountain PBS reports, many are looking to what happened in Colorado after legalization of marijuana. It is the latest in our series on the Green Rush. It is becoming almost routine across much of the country, law enforcement intercepting Colorado marijuana products being exported to other states. In this case, a traffic stop in Tennessee netted 100 pounds of processed pot worth tens of thousands of dollars. In Indiana, it was a lettuce truck headed from Colorado to Florida with a load of marijuana. In South Carolina, it came through the mail. And across Colorado, raids on illegal marijuana grow operations have increased in both rural and metropolitan areas as law enforcement tries to keep up with the burgeoning black market. When Colorado voters approved legalization of marijuana, no one imagined such an opportunity to cash in on illegally grown pot. Every plant here has an RFID tag, and this is you know, logged um, from seed to sale. Chris Woods is president of Terrapin Station, a company that cultivates and dispenses marijuana and THC products for both medical and recreational use. And this is what a legal pot business looks like, complete with special grow lighting. There's a perpetual cultivation cycle that's happening you know, throughout this facility. His meticulous legal grow operations are scrutinized, tracked, and regulated by the Colorado Department of Revenue and the State Marijuana Enforcement Division. Yeah, I think one of the mistakes that was made in Colorado and some other states is allowing for you know, home cultivation. You know, and what we're seeing right now is a lot of cleanup from mistakes that have been made. I had never been in an indoor marijuana grow. I had heard about them. Kevin Merrill, the former agent in charge of Colorado's Office of the Federal Drug Enforcement Administration, agrees. When he first arrived in Denver as a federal drug enforcement agent in 2001, large illegal marijuana grows weren't even on the radar. Most of those that I had even heard about really involved, you know, a couple of individuals trying to make some product for themselves and then sell whatever extra they had uh, to fund their operation. It was a very small mom and pop or operation. But when it became legal for individuals to grow both medical and recreational marijuana in Colorado, federal law enforcement officials say criminal organizations saw an opportunity to illegally grow marijuana in plain sight in residential neighborhoods. The thing that nobody predicted is that normalization, commercialization would be a magnet for international black market activity. Bob Troyer stepped down last year as Colorado's U.S. attorney. They have plumbers, they have electricians, they have front people who rent and buy houses, they have money people, they have an underground banking it's like money laundering system. like a corporation. System. Exactly, just like a corporation. What is this? Oh my God. Perched at the front window of her mom's Firestone Colorado home last year. Look at all the police cars. Angie Wright and her mother witnessed a raid in this suburban subdivision north of Denver. It was just, holy cow, Yeah. something major is going on. Law enforcement officers rolled in and started banging on doors. Oh my God, they're everywhere. I thought maybe it was just the house next door. Oh, they're going in the backyard of that house in the corner. To find out it was as many homes, I had, neither one of us had any idea. Our investigation revealed the raids in Firestone, Colorado in March of 2018 are part of a federal case that started a year earlier and is linked to a web of other suburban properties across the Denver metropolitan area and beyond. Our investigation documented that the DEA has seized more than 78,000 plants so far, as well as more than 2,300 pounds of processed marijuana, serving almost 200 search warrants, making dozens of arrests. This is Colorado's most complex federal black market case since the state legalized recreational cannabis in 2014. Rocky Mountain PBS obtained records showing every federal black market marijuana search warrant between 2014 and November 2018 in which the DEA seized marijuana, and there are hundreds. We plotted each address on a map and found an increasing number of search warrants every year through 2018. And it wasn't only federal and state law enforcement and prosecutors who were taken by surprise by the booming illegal market. We thought that the, the black market would disappear. Former Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper says the state was indeed caught off guard. He is now running for president. Evidently it contracted and then began to expand again. And that, that go, that's counterintuitive, right? It's not what you would expect. But some in the marijuana industry argue that if cannabis is legalized nationally, it would take care of the black market for good. If there's no demand for marijuana from other states, then you know, th there will not be the supply to meet it. It's just you know, a function of business. 
but former DEA agent in charge Kevin Merrill disagrees. Would national legalization of marijuana stop the black market? No. You would always be able to go out there and probably find it cheaper than what you can um, through a state regulated uh, business. Local sheriffs say rural areas of Colorado have also become a destination for out of state marijuana growers. Law enforcement has more ground to cover with fewer officers to find the illegal grows, and they are uncovering connections to other states, particularly Florida. This is a, a trend that we've been seeing since about early 2014. Justin Miller is the intelligence chief for the DEA field office in Miami. Cuban drug trafficking organizations relocating to places such as Colorado, setting up operations, leaving their proxies back here in the state of Florida, and um, producing large-scale marijuana for distribution diversion out of Colorado. Colorado state data shows police have seized Colorado marijuana in at least 34 states, and in Florida, at least 70 times between 2013 and 2017, more than every other state on the East Coast combined. In Douglas County, Colorado, investigators caught this woman who said she'd flown in from Florida to drive a load of marijuana east. I think you're gonna drop all this all off in Florida. I thought so. Miller says Florida once ranked near the top of the nation in indoor seizures at grow houses, but now it's more often imported. It's just a wide, widespread perception that uh, growing marijuana up there is um, uh, much less scrutinized. So authorities keep knocking on doors. Holy crap, that's scary. Destroying plants and says former U.S. Attorney Bob Troyer putting pressure on the criminal groups. There are costs of doing this business that they accept and they calculate. If you are constantly increasing those costs and increasing those risks, you do change their behavior. Former Governor John Hickenlooper agrees. Certainly if we don't push back on it aggressively, it'll get worse. What we never know at any moment in real time is if we've passed a tipping point, we've made a dent, and now we've deterred the behavior. But Troyer and DEA officials say while law enforcement may slow down the illegal business, Colorado will continue to be a major exporter of high quality cannabis for the foreseeable future. For PBS NewsHour, I'm John Ferrugia in Denver.